my HQTs. How are you doing tonight? It's that time again. Yes, cuffing season. And if you happen to be in need of some relationship advice, it seems Drake could be your man. I am not kidding. Millie Bobby Brown has revealed that Drizzy is the one she turns to for teen dating advice. So boys, if she ever dumps you via text or leaves you for your bestie, you know who to blame. It's God's plan. I'm Shazza Carpenter, your trivia advisor who can help you get a lot wiser. And this is HQ Trivia where you use that brain to make it rain. And the rules here are so simple, I'm going to ask you a series of questions from easy to difficult. You've got 10 seconds to tap that answer and tap it good. If you get it correct, you move on. Answer all 12 right, you win or split the cash. Let's talk about those extra lives. We love those extra lives. They can help you win big. Invite a friend to HQ using your code to score one of those. You can use one per game, just not on the final round. Now tonight, we are giving away a loving and tender 1,000 pounds. That's right, 1G. That's enough to score some real dating advice from Tiger Woods or John Mayer, perhaps, for a fancy night out with your crush and an epic weekend with your single friends. But before you blow it, you've got to show it. Okay, it's about that time. Let's get to the quizzing, shall we? Here we go with Q1. One, which sitcom featured the characters Derek Trotter and his younger brother Rodney? Only idiots and donkeys, only halfwits and mares, only fools and horses. Rodney, you plonker. Remember that? You'll feel like the first half of all of them if you got this one wrong. The only two things that work for a living, it's only fools and horses. You weren't fooled by that one. 80,000 of you weren't. The dodgy duo were initially a flop, but caught on after the first and second series were repeated. Everyone deserves a second chance, right? Q2. The computer acronym WWW stands for what? World Wide Web, World's Wackiest Wombats, World's Welsh Whales. Or oh, win, win, win gonna be a big win for you tonight. They're loitering at the front of every web page, but what do those W's stand for? Planet of the Spiders is the World Wide Web. Yeah, is 79,000 of you entrapped in this web of trivia. The web is a network of information, while the internet is what we use to access it. Did you know that? Lucky that wasn't the question, right? Don't forget everyone, you are in for some laughs tomorrow night. It's comedy night here at HQ Trivia, so bring a box of tissues for those tears of laughter because you will be crying. Moving on to Q3, which of these items are used in the kendo martial art form, bamboo swords, large foam hands, rubber ducks? Kendo, not kendo. You gotta do this. Bringing rubber ducks to any fight is a bad idea, but what should you bring to a kendo one? Pinched from a panda's plate, bamboo swords. You're slicing and dicing that one up, 77,000 of you. Kendo is commonly known as the way of the sword, which was a bit of a dead giveaway, really, wasn't it? Made it easy for you there. Q4, which term refers to the transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly? Metamorphosis, photosynthesis, psychoanalysis. Come on, sis and bruv, you've got this one down. Photosynthesis turns sunlight into energy, but what turns a nasty grub into a proper beauty? More power ranges than Sigmund Freud. Metamorphosis is the answer we were looking for. 72,000 of you morphing on to the next round. If you thought our puberty was hard, try sprouting wings too. We got it lucky. Q5, the rotator cuff is a group of muscles in which part of the body? Ankle, thigh, shoulder. I told you it's cuffing season. Time to send out that I miss you text. You know the one. If you went for ankle, I am afraid you've just Achilles yourself. Built to be cried on, you'll find it in your shoulder. Of course, you're shrugging that one off, 58,000 of you are. The rotator cuff helps stabilize and move the shoulder, letting you give yourself a pat on the back for knowing that, if your arm's long enough, which mine isn't. Q6, which of these countries' monarchs has piloted commercial planes for its national carrier? Jordan, Netherlands, Sweden. Instead of just chilling out on the throne, he got to work, or she. 
Even their servants have servants, but whose king has been flying his peasants around the country born to be beneath you? The Netherlands, the king of the Netherlands we are talking about here. And that was a brutal question right there. 23,000 of you moving your way out of the nether regions. Willem Alexander secretly flew KLM planes for 21 years doing two or three short haul flights a month. That's impressive. It's shout out time right now, everyone. We've got Jesse Lingard playing. Jay Lings is with us. A very happy birthday to you and Gub. Happy birthday to Zoe Gooden, who's 36. Hello to Sheila and Mick Halpin competing for those badges tonight. The Hooper family is with us. We've got Andy and Sue playing with the fam as well. Hi, Edward Vickers from Nottingham and to the Victorious Vikings, Abby's parents, and Craig, Brendan, Sherry, and Lee. Also, Amy, Tom loves you. Like this, we're moving on to Q7. Why did President Andrew Jackson once invite 10,000 people to the White House to eat cheese, to watch pig racing, to hear him sing? None of these are really the best reason to go to the White House, though, are they, if you think about it? A pig may have won the last race, but that isn't the White House event we're after here. Oops, did I say that? More of a pong than a sing-along. They were invited to eat cheese believe it or not and you are cheesing if you tapped on that that was a savage question right there Eighteen thousand players out here at the halfway mark six thousand seven hundred and six of you are cheesing you are smiling hard you're moving forward a farmer had gifted him a 1400 pound block of cheese even a president needs help polishing that lot off Q8, which of these artists engaged in a paint-off to establish the authenticity of their work? Georgia O'Keeffe, Margaret Keane, Salvador Dali. A paint-off, that sounds serious, doesn't it? The Bake Off is back, but which of this lot won the great American paint-off eager-eyed? It was Margaret Keane. And your bug-eyed beauty's got that right. 1,850 on another savage. Another sausage question, double the savage, back to back happening here. Now Keane's ex-husband claimed credit for our work, but a painting demonstration proved the big eyed portraits were all hers. She showed him, didn't she? Q9, what gift was given to French workers when the two sides of the tunnel met under the channel? A toy bear, fish and chips, a union jack. See, there's light at the end of every tunnel, isn't there? What else was at the end of it? The French gave us a shrug, but what did we give them in return? The only one they'd even consider accepting. A toy bear. You're not playing around there, 789 of you. Are we going to go with another savage? Are we? We're going to go with a brutal right there. That was a brutal one. Yes, it was. The Paddington bear toy was passed through the small opening, becoming the first Brit to cross the channel without armbands making history. Q10, we are so close. The in-betweeners was originally called which of the following? Briefcase, baggy trousers, the rude boys. There's no in-between here. It's either right or it's wrong. They're easily the rudest boys on TV, but that isn't what they called the pilot. Full of madness, it was baggy trousers. You're still keeping your pants up, 352 of you are. E4 loved the pilot so much that they commissioned the full series, just with a different name and time period and different cast as well. Q11, the penultimate round. Where did George Lucas go when the premiere of the very first Star Wars movie was taking place? Was it Iceland, Tunisia, Hawaii? I would have been on that carpet with Luke on one arm, Han on the other. Lucas was convinced the movie was going to be a flop, so where did he bunk off to instead? A sunny beach far, far away. Hawaii. He went to Hawaii of all places. 107 of you feeling the force. Jedi mind tricks are the ready because we're flying the Millennium Falcon into the final round with 107 players left in the game. Another 36 using the extra lives to get back in. A one grand up for grabs. It's the big one is Q12. Which of these groups first hits was co-written by the singer of Uptown Funk, The Vamps. Maroon 5, Imagine Dragons. Do not funk this one up. They're all stellar bands now, but who got a helping hand from Bruno Mars? Imagine Dragons may have gone radioactive, but their collaboration with Mars is just as imaginary as their reptiles are, preferring claret 
to Maroon is the Vamps for the win tonight. And we have 58 winners, my lovelies. <laughs> to our 58 winners tonight surviving the double sausage and a bunch of brutals as well you are taking home the nice sum of 17 pounds and 24p nice butt gym nice win right there we've got fast 72 that was a fast win for you lul jammy uh, we've got block it we've got loose arenel and a bunch of other winners as well well done what you can do with the cash you could Gift a toy bear through a tunnel or something. Maybe eat a huge slab of cheese with 10,000 friends or download Star Wars. What a thrill ride, HQTs. Did you have a good time? I know I did. And well done to you all. I'm Shazza Carpenter. Come see me on the socials right here on Twitter and IG. And of course, we'll be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. with Comedy Night. Don't forget that. It's going to be a lot of fun and there will be a grand up for grabs, a grand grand. Until then, have the most fabulous of fabulous nights and I will see you soon. Bye.